Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's Friday Morning Ramblings, we're going to go look at the garden. I'm sort of caught up to where I want to be. I'll show you all the stuff that I'm doing for the fall. Just wanted to show you some of the potatoes that I just took out of the garden a couple days ago. These are all from the containers. I'll show you them when we walk by. I also wanted to announce that I'm doing uh, YouTube perks or memberships. I have two tiers. The first tier, I'm going to show you some of the stuff I'm growing for the fall over here too. Two tiers. The first tier is a um, really a mentoring live series that I'm going to be doing. I'll be doing three of them um, every month for two hours and it's really to help mentor people in gardening and take questions and answers. And then the other tier is going to be a, an exclusive series where I really design it based around membership input and stuff like that. If you want to check it out. Right in here is my entire fall garden in flats. It looks like it needs some water too, so I'm glad I came over here. But I have lettuce, spinach, strawberries going, um, that's kohlrabi, broccoli rabe, broccolini, uh, and some peas back there. This is a great way to get your fall garden going if you don't have the space right now. And it's again, I talked about this before, on the northwest side of my house, so it's not getting a lot of water. And in fact, this is dried out. If this was sitting in the southern exposure, these would have all been dead because I missed watering them. So I'll take care of that. All right, let's go out to the main garden. And I'll show you what's going on. Like I said, things are pretty much where I want them to uh, be at this point. Today's September 4th. Wanted to have the garden in shape by the end of August, so that's good enough for me. This space has been cleaned up. That's more artichokes growing back in there. They may make it through our winter. I'm going to mulch and fill up that whole um, metal raised bed there so that they stay warm and the artichokes should come back year after year. Maryland Zone 7 is kind of like on the bubble for the uh, globe artichokes to survive. Going to really fill these up next year. It's going to be leeks, onions, garlic, all the kind of stuff deer don't want to eat. I had deer pressure this year. Herbs are fine. Um, that's okra that just never got going because they keep shearing it down. They've gone away for the last five days. So I'm not sure where they are. They ate all the beans in there. So lesson sort of learned. I already knew it. But this will all be crops that the deer can't eat. And I love onions, leeks, and garlic. So that'll be perfect. Right in the space here is the no, here's the no dig garden. These are my poblanos. I'm going to grill those. I usually just put them on a the grill, fresh picked, grill them down so they kind of char and blacken a little bit because you want to peel the skin off. And then when they're done, I add some olive oil to it and the salt and I do that afterwards. You don't really want to put olive oil on them, then put them on a grill because it burns and it gives it kind of this bad smoky taste. But the poblanos are doing really, really well. And this garden's been pretty much left alone have really turned over this space. This was some of the potatoes you saw up there, but I ate most of these. These all became mashed potatoes. But on 831, I put in little finger carrots in here, in there, and I have another wave of potatoes coming up through there, so that should be wonderful. And I have a lot of watermelons. There's four right here in this space. Two more, one's under the peppers, one's back there. But things are growing really well, and I'm kind of happy that I got most of the weeds out of the way. I took out probably half, if not more, of my tomato plants. I'll show you what I'm keeping. This one is a keeper. This is a supersonic. And I pruned it back, got back to my spraying routine, and you can see it's just loaded with tomatoes. So this is one of the keepers I talked about before. I mean, look at all the tomatoes back there. And I'm pretty much being able to harvest and eat these or give them away. Some of them are splitting and spoiling. The red cherry I kept as an experiment. I can't eat these quick enough. Got to take off another round of split cherries, you know, give them to the woods. But it's coming back too. So in the heat of August, basically what happened is I got tired. I got behind on the watering wasn't watering as deeply and as frequently as I should have. That stressed the plants, the diseases came in easier, wasn't spraying, and a lot of the plants got beat up and died off. If you want to keep your tomatoes healthy, shade cloth, you can check out my other videos, but more importantly, regular watering, regular spraying routine. So again, today is uh, September 4th. So I put in some kohlrabi here on 831, and I just wanted to show you, there's one coming up here, one coming up over here. And part of the beauty of gardening in the fall, your cool weather crops are going to germinate really fast because the soil is so warm. And in fact, I mean, this is my arm sweating. It's 88 degrees. 
the top surface of the soil, I'm going to stress this again, can get up to 90, 100 degrees. If you wanted to, you could use shade cloth to keep it cooler. But if you're starting your seeds now directly, just you want to really water every day. I came out here and watered um, just before I came out here with the video camera. Watered the other plants too that I forgot up on the deck. And that will help keep the soil cool. It's not that big of a deal for a week or two or three. If that cool weather, the fall is going to roll in, you're going to be okay. But if it's the prolonged heat, you're your cool crops just aren't going to do well. I had planted lettuce in here, spinach in here, radishes in here early, and like everybody else, we just kept getting heat and heat and heat, and they just didn't work out. So I put in radishes. These went in on August 31st, and they're all coming up already. So you have time to really direct sow a lot of your cool crops because they're going to germinate so quickly. So I'm transitioning over the whole area. Sometimes it's easier just to take care of one grouping of plants. There's more than one watermelon plant in there. I think there might be two. But concentrate all your energy on to just taking care of one plant instead of having a lot throughout your garden. You can stay up on pest management, spraying, watering, and you can see a beautiful watermelon right there. Another one is forming right there. There's a little one in there. It looks like it's going to die off. It doesn't look right. And I know that there's one on the other side. But you don't have to do, you know, half a dozen different plants. You could just do two or three. Kind of focus your care on them and you're going to get beautiful growth. It's a lot easier to manage. And it really depends on how much time you have. And in fact, the melons here are taking over this whole space. But I kind of look like how it looks. You know, I think I'm going to grow melons here again. Those are Brussels sprouts. That's the crazy white butterfly right on cue that lays the eggs that hatch the green cabbage looper or cabbage worm. Um, I'm actually dusting the leaves of my brassicas because they don't flower or they're not going to be flowering now. I'm not worried about pollinators being harmed by that, but I really want to make sure that these butterflies don't come and just decimate the cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, etc. So I don't mind leaving the insect dust on there. And again, I talked about that before. All insect dust, organic or not, kills all insects, just about. So it kills the good and the bad. So don't put it on plants that are going to be flowering and the pollinators are going to be showing up and leave it there because you're going to kill off more of the good insects. All the potatoes that you saw up on the deck came out of the bags here. I put in... Um, Scotch, or is it Scotts? Scotch, right? Scotch blue curled kale, uh, not Scotts. And in the five gallon pots, I put in one. 10 gallon pots, I put in two. This is filled with spinach. The spinach again went in, let me get my shadow out of here. On 831, five days later, the spinach is already popping up. Continue to clean up this area, more kale, peas, Swiss chard in there, that's starting to come up. Again, they, these went in actually on uh, the day before, so on August 30th. So really five or six days, all of this is really starting to sprout. Some purple top turnips in there. And I don't think I really showed this guy off a lot, but there's three pepper plants, bell peppers, in these 20 gallon pots. And they're just doing wonderfully. I got behind on watering, but got back on them. There's actually four pepper plants in here. And they're, they're doing really well. So I'm going to have bell peppers coming in through, really, I think, until the frost comes. This tower is going to be strawberries. I decided I just love strawberries, and I can't get enough, so I want to grow more. Horseradish is doing well. That was covered in harlequin beetles. Captain Jack's dead bug dust yesterday has killed them all off. It's really that effective. Right in here, that is pak choy, and that's only four days after seeding it. I'm leaving a dandelion because I'm going to harvest and eat the leaves. Peas, I want to show you the green beans that I put over here are doing really well. It's a nice little wall of green beans. The Matt's Wild Cherry got some dust. I didn't do a great job of washing it off because they were getting flea beetles. But all these little wild Matt's Wild Cherry tomatoes are going to be on here and they're going to be great really until the frost comes. And this plant will get five times the size. They were started really, really late, but I wanted to show people you can plant from seed cherry tomatoes and they do really catch up. We are having unseasonably crazy hot weather like most of the country. And I think I just saw on the news 
that there is a heat dome over the western part of the United States and they're going to have maybe temperatures that are 20 degrees hotter than normal. The tomatoes are back to life because I pruned away some of the infected leaves, but I really again got back on watering, really deep watering, watering the surface roots. The spray routine is back and they look beautiful. The tomato plant, the tomatoes actually here look a little bit um, sun scald. So if you have this kind of weird pattern starting there's a tomato that rotted, let's toss that. That's just from the sun beating down on here. So when you prune your tomatoes and you remove a lot of the leaves, if the sun hits them it's going to bleach the area, soften it up. You can still eat that tomato. The mystery tomato is going well and they all just look pretty good. More tomatoes coming in. You know all the growth is back and it's just a matter again I'm going to stress we don't water our plants as much as we think and when we get tired out in August the heat comes in we probably think we water enough the plants get beat up this guy probably should have been pulled out but I kind of have affection towards the brandy wines so I just want to see what this can do and there's a couple still growing that one's ready to be harvested the homestead is coming back watering that's the whole key cleaned out this area got rid of the cantaloupe I'll be planting some more stuff in there. Final wave of cucumbers. They look pretty good. Let me show you ones that look a little bit better. Those are Brussels sprouts all right in there. Cleaned out this area, watering, putting in uh, broccoli. So here's another wave of cucumbers, the final wave. And these will really do fine for September and into October here. And I feel like I'm going to get a longer fall season before the frost really comes in. Cucumber plants, tomato plants are really sensitive, so any frost is going to damage them. That's okay. But my broccoli, my cauliflower, they're all going to, think, I think, get really nice uh, heads on them because I think the cool weather is going to just uh, prolong here through into November, maybe December, before any kind of really hard freeze comes in that might cause damage to them. Cleaned out this area put in some Roxanne radishes. The beets from the summer have been taken care of. The leaves are coming back. Some massive beets in there, leaks over there. This cucumber plant again looks great. Let's spin around over here. My okra, one plant, plenty, doing well. This is a space that I was able to get a lot of cool weather crops in. They're doing pretty good. I have bib lettuce, radishes, that's uh, basil in there, peas spinning over here cauliflower that I just pot, uh, put in. Butternut squash, I'm not going to go over there today, but I, I'm taking it. <laughs> butternut squash out six, seven, eight a week, and I still have plenty in there. Bean plants are doing well. You may have seen the video on the basil. These have been here for 90 days, even longer, because of the shade from the beans. These plants just aren't flowering. They're not bolting. If they do, it's kind of mild like this, and you know, I usually pull this off and use it before I'm even worried about the flower heads. So keeping the soil cooler where you're growing basil through the summer really lets you grow a plant that's gonna look something like that. Super hots, doing amazingly well. Let me just show you some of them. I've got ghosts and scorpions in here, Armageddon, all kinds of different ones. I think they look beautiful. I can't eat them, so I give them away, but they're all super hots, all in the containers through here. Another grouping of cucumbers. You can see that I'm using dust. White butterflies are everywhere. Um, the diseases are still present, so these have been sprayed too. It should control the disease. Watering again, and I think as the temperatures begin to cool, keeping up on the uh, antifungals, watering, all that, I'm going to just have massive beautiful cucumbers for September, October. And they're large enough now. Because it's, it's 88 to today, because I did a poor job of washing that off too, I have to come back and get that dust off of there. Because it's so warm, the soil is nice and warm. We're not getting any cool rains yet. So these plants are just taking off. So even though the cool weather's coming, you're going to get great growth out of most of your plants. That is broccoli. Again, I'm leaving the dust on there because you see all the white butterflies that are around. There's nothing there that bees or pollinators would go to, so I'm not worried about it. Radishes that went in on the 29th, two days before the ones that you just saw germinating in the beginning of the video. So they're taking off. Now, if this heat doesn't start to break, maybe these don't develop well. Um, I'm just kind of in, you know, unknown 
uh, waters right now with the way this heat has been. So I'm just planting as I used to plant my cool weather crops and seeing what happens. More tomatoes looking good. Lots of tomatoes on there. Very happy with that. I'm going to be planting different things into here. Not sure what's going to go in there. You saw the flats of the cool weather crops I have up on my uh, porch. These may not take for whatever reason, maybe it's too hot or maybe you don't have room. So I like having all these backup cool weather crops so that I can just tuck them in into all these spaces. Beautiful sweet peppers in there. They're gonna be all being, get picked today. This watermelon got really beat up because I wasn't watering, of course. Two beautiful melons, been watering, and look at the beautiful growth that's coming back. So that green growth will help those melons develop, but I also get more, which you can see flowers coming right there. So that's plenty of time before I get frost here in Maryland Zone 7 for me to get melons out of this plant. Keep it watered, they're going to do fine. The sprays are back on there, they're going to do fine. A little light dusting for cucumber beetles that tend to go on watermelon too. That's a peanut plant. All this space has been cleared out. Not sure what's going to go on there. All these uh, burgundy beans will be left there to dry. I'll use them as um, dried beans. I'll make soups out of them. Jalapeno is doing well. The leaves are coming back. We just made jalapeno poppers out of all of those. Three of the tomato plants were pulled out of here. This is the Whopper. This is the one that I double um, stem pruned and it's doing well. You know all the red tomatoes down there are orange. All the greens and again should I say it? Consistent watering, spraying, all of my tomato plants have really come back. Things are looking pretty good. Here's a part of the garden that I got to figure out what to do with next year. These are all my hot peppers. They all got watered. They're doing really well. Some, you know, waste of peppers, but I'm pretty much getting them moved out and getting them to people or getting them into my stomach um, at a pretty good pace. Shade cloth. Shade cloth, that can be your best friend. I'll be using a lot of that next year. Took out a lot of tomato plants here. This one's sort of a test. I'm just doing different experiments on it to see if I can get it to come back. Black cherries doing well. So many cherry tomatoes, I don't even know what to do with them. This is the space that I have to figure out for next year. So I gotta raise the soil level. Not sure what I'm gonna put in there. These are muscadines, which I just let grow out of control. Muscadine um, fruit forms on second year growth. So this is gonna get pruned way back and I should have beautiful muscadines coming in next year. I have a lot of fruit in there, but this is just overgrown. I should never have put two uh, plants in there. I didn't know what I was doing four or five years ago. Um, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna prune this back a whole lot. It will keep this uh, tunnel covered and it'll just have wonderful muscadines. I really love them. This is the uh, brown mission fig, which is massive, came back on its own, Top wood died off, these grew back. But the issue is, there's no figs. So I don't know if it's a certain amount of years before they start forming or, you know, that they die back here in Maryland in the winter, they have to regrow. So I'm not really getting figs. I'm gonna give this guy one more chance. I'm gonna prune out the bottom so there's more airflow down there and I don't have rabbits hiding in there, which they're doing now. And we'll see what happens. And if not, I'm going to have to pull this plant out and put, put it somewhere else. Blackberries look good. They look so good that they are taking over this whole space in here. I'm going to have to figure out something to do next year. Um, I love blackberries, so I'm not really worried about it. Except this old tunnel used to be for tomatoes. I think now it's just going to be part of my fruit garden. But, you know, I'm never going to complain when you have too much great growth. The blueberries are, ooh, let me get out of here, doing extremely well. They are coming back. They are taking over. I'll be putting up some sort of fencing along here just so that I can push the blueberries up. But I'm taking um, all my strawberry towers, cleaning them out. This one still has to be cleaned out, but pretty much doing this to them. In Maryland Zone 7, I just feed these. I did a video on it. It'll be coming out soon. Um, water soluble fertilizer, a couple other things, and I just leave everything out here all winter long. These sometimes freeze through, but my strawberries come back.
And you can see that I have strawberries now because I'm growing some everbearing in a lot of the containers. But this one's been cleaned up. This one's been cleaned up right in here. I'm going to clean up this one today, this one today. And that basil, you know, is okay. Um, it's just been so hot baking the container that I'm going to pull all that out except for the cilantro and then the strawberry um, Transplants that you saw up on my porch will be going into there. I just want tons of blueberries Strawberries and blackberries. I love having those in the garden Some more artichokes in here, but this is something I showed I think last week, too This is my ginger and it is growing extremely well. I'll be doing a harvesting video on there, but I'll be able to use fresh ginger throughout the winter and fall. So that was a success. So I'll be doing more ginger growing in the containers around here. The trees look good. The hops, I might actually get rid of them. I'm not sure, I don't really use them anymore. Um, I'm not sure what I'll put in their place, but I wanna grow something, you know, that towers up. I'll have to be looking for something um, different to replace some of them. Or maybe I'll just keep one plant in the middle because it's kind of cool. But things look pretty good. I think we can finish up really in this space. Blueberries, all I really do is in the beginning of the year, they get um, an acidic water-soluble fertilizer. I use the chemical type. You don't need to worry about the quote, chemical fertilizers. Everything is a chemical. If you're really practicing organic gardening, 90% of the time and you come in and you just put some uh, chemical acidic type water soluble fertilizer on your blueberries in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year you haven't wrecked anything you're not poisoning your plants you didn't do anything wrong it's just silly to think that you have to be a hundred percent why because the chemical types are the easiest way to bring the acidity to the blueberries which they love and you can see that they thrive in between that, they get compost when I throw it down. They'll get some handfuls of organic granular thrown on there. They're just left to do their thing. You can combine fertilizers if you want. All I'm saying is if you want to be 100% organic, that's cool. But I don't want people that aren't familiar with the different fertilizers to fear that if they use something that's, quote, chemical, um, that they're poisoning themselves or something like that. It's just not true. This, uh, this tomato plant in here grew by itself. So maybe I'll just grow my cherries over here. There's more cherries back over in that corner. This is crazy. I showed you this last time. I haven't looked in here yet, but no spraying, no watering, nothing. And the tomatoes in here are going nuts. And I don't see much disease on there. You would think that disease would be there. But anyway, I should be getting tomatoes off of here. I think these are Juliet's that just started growing over here. The Shishitos, so many of them. Harvest number six, maybe. All the red ones will be coming off. They're gonna get grilled up too. Doing well. They've survived their diseases. And let me just show you. We'll end right here. And again, please check out um, the membership on my channel. The first tier memberships, again, is really about mentoring and taking questions and answers from uh, members. And I'll spend two hours, three times a month, really trying to help people out. But just look at the beautiful peppers on here. These plants came back with a vengeance even after having that disease. This is sun scald too. You can get sun scald on pepper plants. But just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. That is not sun scald. But you can let it develop and then just cut that piece off and eat it. So many peppers in here. Next year I do need to fill this up a little bit more. But this was a success. I think, I don't know how many is in there, 12 or 16 pepper plants packed in there. And they're just doing really well. I mean, it's, it's a success. The second tier of my membership is a unique series called um, Grow As I Grow. It will really be designed and, and created by taking input from, from members who signed up for the perks. I'll still be doing all the videos I do. This is just something in addition to um, the videos that I make every year. This is the fruit area, just packed full of the bushes, the brambles, the canes, everything, strawberries over there. So, I mean, this is kind of overgrown, but I'm very happy with it. Thanks so much for watching. You got plenty of time to direct seed a lot of your cool weather crops. Get that fall weather garden started. The heat, I think, is almost gone here in Maryland Zone 7. But if you do plant your fall garden, it doesn't quite take. You're, just go ahead and plant it again. You got time. Thanks for watching.